God, I hate myself sometimes. Hello, book world! I'm back! And literally, I think I've been in the lab more than I have been on this bed. Can't wake up. But with that being said, let's begin with a review of Clash of Kings by George R. R. Martin, a review that I promised to you a long time ago. For this one, this is going to be just a review. I'm not going to talk about any of the spoilery details involved in the Clash of Kings. If you have read the book and do want like a more like discussion-based video where I do talk about the things that actually go on and happen in this book in detail and give some spoilers, please Please check out my Game of Thrones discussion. I will leave a link in the thing down below if I remember or it'll just be on my channel. I would expect that you have read Game of Thrones if you're interested in this at all. If we want to give a brief summary here, basically A Clash of Kings centers around the idea of a bunch of different kings now competing for the throne and then of course we have Danny who is slowly building up her army in the south and of course we have all of the different perspectives all the different Stark perspectives we have Arya who is going on a very difficult journey disguised as an orphan and trying to live her life without being captured by the Queen's people. We have Bran, who is trying to run Winterfell basically all on his own. We have Theon, who is trying to balance the idea of being in power and being kind, which he doesn't do very well. And of course we have Danny, who is, like I said, competing. We have Tyrion, who is trying to run things at home, and I really enjoyed his perspective this time. It was always super interesting, always really refreshing, and quite frankly, Tyrion brought a really smart, dynamic perspective to the table that you don't really see with some of the other perspectives. The Clash Kings obviously has many new perspectives, and I enjoyed them, but I honestly have to say, especially when it came to Theon Greyjoy's new perspective as kind of I, what I would find a replacement for Ned, it didn't really suit me. It didn't tickle my fa- what? I was gonna say t it didn't tickle my fancy. I don't know what that means, but it didn't do it. I just find Theon incredibly unlikable, and there's not that many redeeming qualities about him, making him kind of a very stereotypical, like, superhero movie villain versus, like, an actual real-life villain. He's immature, he's supposed to be my age, he kind of reminds me of some of the boys that I know. We also get two other perspectives that we didn't get last book, and that is uh, Davos Seaworth and, of course, uh, Maester Cresson, who only had a perspective in the prologue. Now, I liked Mr. Creston's brief little prologue because I think it was a really interesting insight into Stannis, and Davos, of course, brought more insights into Stannis as the book progressed. Now, Stannis himself is a really interesting character, but I really do enjoy how people are viewing him from the outside because so much of what makes Stannis Stannis is his concern with how other people are viewing him versus how other people view his brother. Now, of course, at the end of Game of Thrones, there is a new seat kind of for the throne available because Joffrey is supposedly illegitimate. So you have a ton of kings currently competing for that spot. The more important ones in this novel, I feel, are Rob and Stannis and Renly. And of course, we still have Tyrion, Arya, Sansa, Jon, Danny and Catelyn. And I actually didn't dislike Catelyn as much in A Clash of Kings as I did in A Game of Thrones. I do have to say the one thing that I didn't like is that there was a part in the book that got very very slow. I think it was about 500 pages in. That sounds weird to say. But it was about like 500 to 700 pages in. It just dragged on. Which is interesting because the first 500 pages actually went a lot faster for me than Game of Thrones. Another complaint I have about this novel is that some of the perspectives got really boring really fast, such as Theon's and Catelyn's and John's. I feel like those three especially really lacked the certain spark that George R. R. Martin was able to put into the other perspectives and the certain likability that he's usually able to put into his characters. I also think it's disappointing how um, Marjorie in the TV show, Marjorie Tyrell, and if you haven't seen the show, it's not going to be a huge spoiler, is much more present uh, in the show than she is in the book. In the book, it's much more about Renly, and also it's interesting, like, it's definitely hinted at that Renly is in a gay relationship, but it's not super, like, canonized, I guess. But I do think it's actually more well-written than A Game of Thrones. It has a lot more complexity, but also a lot more, like, truth and different characters and different perspectives in really different parts of this world that weren't touched on before. So I really do appreciate that. And I'm also sorry because as I am speaking, my voice is slowly leaving me. It is cold and flu season and I have a terrible immune system. Anyway, I know this was kind of a weird review, kind of messy, kind of just my thoughts just thrown at you at random. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you keep writing, reading, and doing whatever else you're doing. I will see you next time. Bye. <coughs> Death.